Hey everyone, it's Amanda with Red F Designs, and it's time for another nighttime kiln opening. So I've been waiting for this one for a couple of days. It was right done just before I left for vacation, and I couldn't check it because it was still too hot. I opened the lid, so I've seen the top, but I can't wait to get what's in there at the bottom. All right. So, let's see here. Zoom in on that. Okay, let's start off with the cones. I've got three, um, two different sets of cones. One on the top, one on the bottom. And I went for a cone five with a 20 minute hold. So here's five, here's six, and here's seven. So I've been trying to adjust the cone five so that I maybe get a cone six because every time I do a cone six I get a cone seven so I'm trying to get like the perfect six but obviously that isn't the way so we'll try something else next time okay I'll go for this one because it's um, a cast piece Guess I should have put a little more glaze on that. This is Amber Topaz by Mako two times. And then there is Tiger's Eye on the outside. Kind of patchy. Last time I used Tiger's Eye, I feel like I put too much on it and it got too opaque. So that's what it looks like thick and that's what it looks like thin. Um, but I really wanted to put it on texture, which is this part on the lid here, and then I wanted to make it match, you know, somehow. So the issue with this lid, it was so thin, though, I think it's warped slightly. You can see the top is, like, concave. So it was up on this little rim, and it must have just sunk. Uh, this is a... Uh, underglaze transfer under the amber topaz which looks dynamite um, so let's see if it fits I guess mm. the issue with it um, bending I think was that as it bent like inwards like that and then the the rim came up a little bit and so now it doesn't fit that great So anyway, box, unsuccessful. We'll try it again. This is a mold, so I can make, uh, you know, another one. This one is super nice. This is a hand-built plate that I made. Just kind of pinched it into a circle and didn't worry too much about being super smooth or accurate, but... Um, it's a little, you know, kind of bumpy, but it's very nice. And then a little hand-sculpted moth guy. This guy's got, um, on the wings, I used some high-fire wire and made a little loop. And then I filled that loop with slip. So it was kind of like, it's like way stronger than if it was just clay. It might just break off. And this combo was um, the Spectrum Texture Autumn all over two times and then Running Hot Chowder and applied in a pattern. So you can kind of see the pattern here. I've got these zigzags and then spots. So I did some zigzag spots. I did it on here too, but I maybe something was too thick. The pattern didn't come out as much on the moth as it did on the plate, but really pretty. It's a good combo, texture autumn and running hot chowder. Okay, so this is a hand-built bowl that I did. And it is Power Turquoise from Laguna first, and then Night Moth by Mako. 
I kind of almost like the outside better than the inside. I think I put a lot more Night Moth on the inside, but it looks nice with the turquoise peeking through like that. Really good combo. It's a little dimpled, maybe, where the crystals are, but not, um, you know, there's no, not any pinholing or anything. <clears throat> um, this is a little money um, that I did and blue or teal but really light coat because I knew I was going to stilt it and um, I didn't want it to stick so actually the stilt marks hardly even registered I think this, the thicker the glaze is the harder it is to stilt maybe sometimes because it like runs down the wire and gets clumpy so that one's cute and then this is the stilt I had it on uh, like nine pin stilt. this is a bottom I'll show you the rest of the box when I find it and this was a glaze drip that dripped off uh, this enchanted forest bowl I had made before and I thought it had a really sharp top. I thought, well, I'll try firing it again, see if I... But it's stuck to there forever. And sometimes when the glaze falls off your pot in a little drip and drips and it comes off, it's this cute little dot that you could maybe use for jewelry or something. Um, so I thought I'd test if it worked twice with one that was sharp. Let's move these. Alright. Ooh, okay. So, this one let's do first. This was a refire. First ever refire. Yay! So, at first it was sandstone on top, storm on the bottom, and... In the middle, I had done this wiggly line of Georgie's Jujube that then didn't move at all, and it looked just like a wiggly line, and I wanted it to look like the beach. And so um, I put a, a really thick layer of honey flux on top of it, and then some seaweed below that. So that looks nice. The glaze just barely made it to the bottom. And it's got that same stand, uh, sandstone, Mako sandstone, inside. Which I like. It has a certain look to it. It's not super glossy, but really interesting. Okay. This one was a little hand-built potion bottle that I made and satin patina and then shipwreck. Wow, look at that. Nice. It's like got a real interesting spotty texture. Blues and greens. Satin Patina is an interesting glaze. I like it a lot on its own, um, but it does some cool stuff in combination, too. So that's really cool. Okay. Oh, here's the little top to this box I made. Tiny little hexagon box. Um... I did coral gloss inside, the new Mako coral gloss. And then outside I did uh, lemon meringue, which is new to me. It's kind of a matte glaze. I've been trying out like some different kinds of glazes for the outside of a conch shell. If you've ever seen a conch shell, um, the outside has a very kind of specific weathered kind of look. Um, I've got another shell in here, so we'll have to see. And then um, this is Georgie's Seafoam Tie-Dye Glaze, which I like a lot. It's very nice. Nice kind of green. How you want that um, 
you know, Bermuda green mason stain to be usually, but maybe it's not. And then some jujube also here. So I'm kind of experimenting with textures on that and applications to see how you can get a nice actual sea foam look. But cute little tiny box. So yeah. <clears throat> Okay, um, oh dear, okay, let's see, so, so this one is pink opal, a cast teacup, pink opal on the bottom, and then birch on the top with galaxy over that, I'm kind of overlapping a tiny bit onto the pink opal just because I wanted it to you know, drip down there. It's a sweet little teacup. And another teacup that I did, this is Obsidian with reactive, uh, sorry, rea uh, Spectrum Reactive Red over the top. I wasn't sure at first if I put enough or I didn't want there to be too much. I know reactive red has got a, sometimes it wants to pinhole if it's too thick and sometimes obsidian eats stuff up. So it's kind of like a good combo between the two. Kind of a purpley, purple color. I see other people getting like this kind of bright, very bright purple, but um, I don't see that quite in here. This is a little cup that I did, um, some, what do you call it, wax etching on it. Um, I had a white, um, raw green, greenware cup, and I painted wax cloud shapes on it, and then kind of wiped back so that the clouds are now puffed out a little bit and remained white and then as while the wax was still on i painted a kind of an ombre of underglazes on here um violet and lavender velvet underglazes from amico and then inside is this really nice laguna lavender it's kind of like a celadon it's from the line of theirs where the test tiles all have a little starfish on them. Um, so I got two from that. I got the lavender and the Roman violet. So I haven't tried that other one yet, but I'm real happy with that. It's kind of like the purple celadon you always wanted. So, okay. This is um, a cast piece. It's a I guess like a succulent planter or something. Coral sands on the inside. It's a pretty orangey orange. I wasn't sure how orange it was going to be. And then on the outside is the new fossil rock from their new line. And I left a couple bare spots here just um, so that I could sit it on the shelf. I didn't want to stilt this one. I don't know why. I think I think that fossil rock has got a really nice outside of a shell look to it. And I wonder if you combine coral sands maybe with another more pinky glaze if you'd get some good combos. I'll have to try that. This is just a lid to something I have in the bottom. And okay. Ooh, stilted. Pull that off. So this is um, cobalt wash painted into all the cracks and then wiped back. Okay, cobalt wash wiped back and then sky celadon over the top of it. This is a crazy pot that I made 
Um, I took a little lump of clay and I made all these grooves and textures in it and then I just pinched it out and tried to keep those cool textures. So I like it. It's neat. And then I did a bigger one here and this one there goes that stilt okay and this one is got this brown clay the other one was white clay this one's my brown clay and it's got rutile wash on it only rutile wash and wiped back and I don't know. Did I do clear over the inside? I can't remember now. I don't have that in my notes, but maybe I did. And I just did some maybe clear on the tiny highlights there. It's a cool look. I've been kind of looking for a glaze that looks like honey on a brown clay. And this is kind of close to that, so... Okay, um, this is a planter I made with a roller that I made in kind of a cool wood grain pattern. And then the inside is lustrous jade with lime shower over the top. I had no expectations of this. I just made it up and this is what it looks like. Kind of like blue rutile maybe. A little greener, a little spottier, maybe. So that's fun. I've got another one of these, too. I don't know if I should glaze over this texture or just leave it raw. Okay, so now these. I can't remember which other one I did. These are two. These are the new... Um, the new Mako stoneware glazes and I don't know it's like uh, ivy is this one I did the two green ones because these are tiny trees and the other one is it riptide or nimbus I can't I can't remember I'll have to put it in the comments so really matte on this one whichever it is nice variation though between that turquoise and kind of a matte green and then the ivy which i've heard is a runner this one is stuck so here's this one close up ivy i like how it looks on all the test tiles but i'll have to use it on something actual next time instead of just this tile <clears throat> Okay, so stilts. I like stilting stuff. If you never stilted anything and you want to, it's not as hard as you think. So I kind of like that glaze all the way to the bottom look too. That's why I always do my lidded vessels like I do. I really hate that, uh, you know, raw clay on raw clay, fired clay, I mean, kind of when the lid, when the lid rotates, it's kind of like fingernails on a chalkboard. Woo. Okay, I did the crazy bead rack in here. Let's see. That's another reason why I was kind of trying to do the the cone five oops firing because of the bead rack. Oh wow, okay, so let's see, this one I know. <coughs> Here's one of my B mugs. And like I said, trying to oh that's got a little sharp right there. Trying to find some good honey kind of themed glazes on the brown clay. I love Mako root beer on the white clay. 
makes kind of a nice really warm brown this is texture leopard from spectrum on my brown base pretty nice it's really yellow in some places and really white in some other places maybe that's like the texture spot I wonder if I stirred it up enough pretty cool This one is that cool jar that I made, and here is the lid. Ta-da! <clears throat> this has got, it's a cast piece. I left kind of the texture that came with it, but you can't really see what that's like a bird on a branch or something. Um, this is two coats of pearl white, and then like three coats of blue or teal. And then I wiped it back all the way to this rim and it kind of pooled there you can see but really nice overall I like it <clears throat> I made those flowers with a tiny little cookie cutter okay this goblet oh yeah that looks just like I wanted it to look so this is um, this color I mixed myself from Mako Gloss. It's a uh, five to one um, purple gloss to white gloss, and mostly purple, just a little white to lighten it up. And then Aurora Green here, and Satin Patina here, and then Dark Flux and kind of like a V-shaped pattern so that it did those nice spaced out drips. Yeah, that's a good combo. I love purple and green together. And then I made this really deeply textured moon mug, and I wasn't sure what to put on it. So I did just pearl white. Um, maybe too much. Looks pretty good, but it kind of looks spotty. You can see there's a lot more texture to it, some dots and starbursts and things that maybe didn't get quite picked up, but pretty nice coverage on the inside. Sometimes I find with pearl white that I, as I'm brushing it on, and then the bottom doesn't get enough on it, and so... <clears throat> so then the brown shows through on the bottom, but that didn't happen here, so. Okay. This is a cool combo I saw on Facebook. Um, wrought Iron and Celadon Bloom. And so the way the two react with each other kind of makes this a um, lot lighter, kind of almost orangey brown. So I did some mountain shapes because I wanted it to look like a starry night horizon with the mountains or a sunset. Um, I guess I should have gone thicker with the wrought iron. I didn't want to put too much underneath so that it wouldn't overpower it. But also maybe next time I'll only put the base glaze over this part and not the dots because I'm getting a lot of spottage here. Still, it looks pretty good. I do like the Celadon Bloom. It reminds me of just, you know, fireflies or some kind of snow or something. <clears throat> Both Mako glazes. A cast mug. Ooh. Melted. Oh, man, look at that drip. So this one was like a thousand colors, so I'm not surprised that it ran so much. It's lustrous jade all over three times, and then just on this top part, like so that I figured maybe if it was on this ledge, like it wouldn't fall all the way down, but it did. 
um, and then honey flux, raspberry mist, and iron yellow all in this section. <clears throat> I didn't get as much pink as I would have liked, but it's still really pretty. Maybe I can get that drip off somehow. It's only just one drip. Huh. Always use cookies. That's the motto. <clears throat> Ooh, all right. Oh no, this one ran too. Oh my gosh, so much. Ow. All right. And it kind of crawled as well. Hmm, that's too bad. I was really gonna looking forward to this mug. Um <clears throat> my first speckled buff piece. See that nice speckly buff color. Um and then Georgie's sea foam. And then with a uh, line of Sand and Sea by Mako. And wow, that ran so much. I don't think it's ever coming off of there. <clears throat> kind of a pretty combo. I guess I'll have to just maybe modify it somehow. I'm always looking for good ocean combos. It looks like one kind of one color for the sea and one color for the waves that look good together. <clears throat> it might have been that 20 minute hold. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, that is probably too much. <clears throat> oh, lots of runny combos in this one. Dang. Oop, there it comes off. Okay. Oh, look at all the colors in there. This one, yeah, obviously the soft white kind of took over. This is why I like making these cast pieces, because if this was a, a mug that I spent so much time on, when it came out like this, I'd be kind of like, rawr. And, uh, <clears throat> so soft white runs a ton. Watch out. So the combination was soft white, reactive red, Lime shower and power turquoise, and you basically can't see any of it, so it's all kind of pulled up here at the bottom. There's quite a quite a rim. The handle is nice though, huh? You see all the kind of colors came through on the handle. <clears throat> Some crazy stuff in here. All right, let's look at these cones. So five, six, seven. Um, so obviously it got to, you know, obviously a five and then sort of a five and a half, maybe we can call it. Didn't make it to six though. <clears throat> Ooh, look at that. Okay, this is a cool combo this is one coat of light flux just up to the top um and then white opal all over mako and then pink opal only on the bottom and then eggplant only on the top and then glacier like a line like right in between the pink and the purple and then some more flux over the top of that so you can kind of see how it flux that glacier down there and um <clears throat> i think white opal is kind of a interesting glaze because along with other mako glazes it makes this kind of speckly floaty frosty effect so i'll have to experiment more with that the inside woo fab Look at that, huh? So that's just the white opal underneath the eggplant. White opal and flux underneath the eggplant on this top section. There. And this is a hand-built uh, pinched tea white teacup that I made. <clears throat> okay, now the bead rack. Here we go. Looks like this stuff all stayed pretty 
you see that there? I'll just zoom it in for a second. Everything's spaced out really good. So, I just don't want this video thing to fall over. <clears throat> okay, so, this guy, brown clay, indigo float, and pearl white. Oh, and it looks like the thing pulled out of it here, the hook. Hopefully I can fix that. It's a little sculpted guy. I made this guy a long time ago and I just thought I'd throw him in the bead rack. Same as like that whale. I don't want it to be glazed on all sides. That's why you do a, <clears throat> a stilt or a bead rack. So... The urchins, this must be textured turquoise, and I didn't do enough on there. These were all white, though, interestingly, I think, weren't they? Maybe not. Maybe it was brown clay. Little hand-sculpted urchin with a little hanger. <clears throat> This one is Georgie's Raw Honey. That looks pretty nice on the brown. It's kind of like a good honey color too. And then these are pearl white on the brown. The little twisty kind of earrings. <clears throat> Looks like that one wire bent a little bit, the one that the whale was on. So that's probably about the max um, weight for one of these sticks. And this one is pearl white also, just on the brown. And then two little acorns. I didn't write these down, but it looks like the top is Spectrum Nutmeg Chino, and the bottom is possibly Amico Celadon Wasabi. I kind of have to, I made these a long time ago too, and I kind of put the little tops on, on them, like whichever way I thought they would fit, but they don't actually, um, they're hard to string that way. So i put them different next time. <clears throat> and then the last one, my little manatee, hand sculpted manatee. He's hollow and Amico smoke celadon on him. I love manatees. We used to go to Florida for vacation. They come right up to you. So sweet. A little tail. And some wrinkles. All right. So, quick kiln load. Pretty happy with most stuff. It's a little bit of running, but what are you going to do? <clears throat> Which was the best? I don't know. I guess I really liked the... Oh, probably either one of these is my favorite the power turquoise and night moth or the blue teal and pearl white okay thanks for checking it out peace